Hi friends, my name is Ansha and I'm an educator of An Academy and you can follow me on our website or you can download the An Academy learning app. So uh, in this lesson we'll discuss the RSA algorithm. So uh, if you like my lesson please rate, recommend and review and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, so this is one of the very important public key crypto system example. RSA algorithm okay and why this name RSA because these uh, great people Rivas Shamir Rivas Shamir and Adelman developed this algorithm in 1978 so that's why we have this name RSA Rivas Shamir and Adelman okay now so as we discussed in the lesson public key cryptography we learned the application isn't it so what were the applications encryption decryption and digital signature and key exchange now this algorithm RSA algorithm can be used for all these applications okay RSA algorithm have all these three applications encryption decryption digital signature and key exchange okay so uh, this is RSA algorithm so uh, so to encrypt and decrypt there must be a key isn't there and not just a key but uh, what but a pair of keys one private key one private key and one public key right so first uh, we need an algorithm to generate this keys so we have an algorithm for key generation and then for encryption we have some uh, equation and for decryption we have some equations okay so this is RSA algorithm and the sub algorithm is key generation and we have steps for encryption as well as decryption okay so first let us see how to generate the keys okay so this is the algorithm to uh, generate keys so the first step is to select two prime numbers p and q okay now this uh, p and q should be very large prime number so to get higher security so as so uh, as the uh, values of p and q get higher security also gets higher okay but in this example we are going to discuss this using an example but in this example i am using small values so that the explanation becomes and calculations also becomes easier okay so uh, for uh, p and q i am choosing values 3 and 11 both are prime numbers okay so the condition is that p and q must be prime numbers okay and it should be very large to increase the security so that is the first step we need to choose a value for p and a value for q and these values must be prime numbers so i have selected 3 and 11 okay now the next step is calculate n n equal to what p into q so uh, n equal to p into q and what is p here 3 and what is q here 11 so 3 into 11 is equal to what 33 so we got uh, n also okay now what is the next step next step is to calculate phi of n okay phi of n equal to what p minus 1 into q minus 1 now what are the values of p and q here so p is 3 and q is what 11 so 3 minus 1 into 11 minus 1 that is 2 into 10 equal to what 20 okay so we got the values for p q n and phi of n also okay now what is the next step next step is to choose a value for e so uh, in this algorithm or in this rsa we are using two variables e and d for a uh, public key and private key okay so first we chose values for p and q then we calculated n then we calculated phi of n now we need values for e and d okay so first uh, so the next step is to uh, choose a value for e but uh, before choosing a value there are some condition first is e must be between 1 and phi of n okay and second is e and phi of n uh, must be co prime or the gcd of phi of n uh, comma e must be 1 okay this is called relatively prime or co prime and all now uh, so this is okay it's very easy to check uh, it is very easy to choose a value between 1 and phi of n that's okay but what is co prime so uh, gcd of e and phi of n must be 1 that means uh, there must not be any common factor other than 1 so uh, for example if you take 3 and 5 these two numbers are co prime why because there are no common factors other than one isn't it now uh, because um, what is gcd it's greatest common divisor or it is also called as highest common factor hcf okay so if you take uh, 3 and 5 what is the highest common factor it's 1 isn't it there are no other factors for 3 and 5 so that is exactly what we call relatively prime numbers or co prime numbers or uh, this okay so uh, that is an example 
Now, uh, if you take 3 and 6, they are not co-prime. Why? Because 3 is a common factor, isn't it? So, GCD or HCF will be 3, 4, uh, 3 and 6, isn't it? So, that's not a relatively prime number and that kind of numbers we can't choose for E. So, uh, that is the second condition and this is the first condition. So, um, it must be between 1 and 5 of N and uh, uh, this number E and phi of n must be what? Co-prime. Okay. So, I have chosen 7. Now, 7 is between 1 and 20, isn't it? So, first condition is satisfied. And what about 7 and 20? What is the uh, greatest common divisor? It's 1, isn't it? There are no other common factors. So, uh, it's okay. E, the value for E is okay here. So, now the next step is to calculate D. So, now, D is equal to E inverse mod phi of n. Okay, this is the equation to find E. So, uh, after you choose E, you can find D from that. Okay, now what is E? E is 7. Now, what is this E inverse? This is called multiplicative inverse. And how to calculate the multiplicative inverse? You can use this method. That is uh, E inverse, D equal to E inverse mod phi of n. So, this inverse, that means 1 by E, this E can come here to this side, left side, okay. So, E D equal to 1 mod phi of n. Now, what is E? E is 7 and D we don't know which uh, we are going to find D and then 1 mod what is phi of n? Phi of n is 20. So, when you apply values, we get this equation 7 into D equal to 1 mod 20, okay. So, to find this, what you need to do is you need to find a value here D, value for D such that 7 into d more 20 should be 1. Okay. So, that is the, that is a method to find multiplicative inverse. So, uh, so when you do modulus operation, when do you get the result as 1? If the number is a multiple, if a, num a number greater than the multiple of this number, isn't it? If you get 21 here, 21 more 20 will be 1, okay. And uh, next multiple is what? 40. So, 41 more 20 will be 1. Then 61 more 21 will be, sorry, 61 more 20 will be 1. Or 80 more 20, 81 more 20 will be 1. Isn't it? Now, you can check this. So, uh, what you need to do is, you need to find the multiples of this number 20. So, 20 into 1 equal to 20. Then we have 40. Then we have 60. Then we have 80. And we need a num 1 greater than this number. That is, we need to get 21 or 41 or uh, 61 or 81 or 121 or 101 etc. Okay. So, you need to uh, find a number here so that it results in such a number. So, it's very easy here. So, 7 into d equal 7 into d more 20 equal to 1. So, you can uh, put 3 here. So, you get 21. Okay. So, 21 more uh, tw 20 will be what? 1. Okay. So, that's okay. So, that is a uh, multiplicative inverse of this number. 7, okay. So, 7 inverse mode 20 will be what? 3, okay. So, to find multiplicative inverse, I use this method, but there is this extended Euclid's method and all in number theory concepts, but I think this is much simpler. Only uh, what uh, you need to do is, you need to find multiples of this number and just add one number to this, okay. So, what are the multiples of this number? 20, 40, 60, 80 etc. Then you add 1 to this. So, 21, 41, 61, 81 etc. Then you need to find a number so that it results in here. So, when you multiply 7 with this number, then you must get uh, any of these numbers. Okay. So, I use this method, uh, but uh, this uh, there are other methods also in mathematics like uh, extended Euclid's method and all, but um, those are actually very confusing. So, I use this method. Okay. Now, uh, so we got values for E and D. Okay. What is E? E is 7. What is D? D is 3. Okay. So, we got these numbers P equal to 3, Q equal to 11, N equal to 33, phi of N equal to 20, E equal to 7 and D equal to 3. 
Now uh, the next step is to find the public key and private key. Now public key P U equal to E comma N. So what is E? E is 7 and what is N? N is 33. So 7 comma 33 is the public key and private key equal to D comma N. What is D? D is 3 and what is N? N is 33. So 3 comma 33 is private key and 7 comma 33 is the public key. Now uh, we got all the keys and the pairs. So now the next step is to encrypt the data and decrypt the data. Now these are the equations for encryption and decryption. So for encryption we have plain text equal to M. So M, there is a condition for M. So there is a condition for M. This message, what we are going to encrypt must be less than N. Okay. So uh, what, is the, what is N here? It's 33. Okay. So uh, this is the equation to find the corresponding ciphertext. So uh, for an example, I choose 31, which is less than 33, isn't it? So M can be 31. Now, uh, what do we need next? E, value for E. What is E? E is 7. And what is N? N is 33. So M raised to E mode N becomes 31 raised to 7 mode 33. Now you can calculate this value. You will get 4. Now the corresponding cipher to this uh, message 31 is what? Equal to 4. Okay. You can check this. And the calculation part is not a nightmare in case of gate because you can use a virtual calculator. Isn't it? So uh, you'll get 4 as uh, the cipher. Now how to decrypt this? So we have cipher text equal to what? 4. Isn't it? Cipher text equal to 4. And uh, the equation is C raised to D mode N. So what is D? D is 3 and what is N? 33. So we'll get uh, 4 raised to 3 mode 33 and you, uh, you can check this. You'll get 31 as the answer which is the original plain text. Okay. So in the previous lesson when we studied public key cryptography, we studied uh, we are using public key for uh, encryption and we are using private key for decryption. Isn't it? Now you can see what is the public key here. Public key is what? 733. Now see this 7 and 33 is used for encryption, isn't it? And what about decryption? For decryption we studied we are using private key. And what is the private key here? 333. See 3 and 33 are used for decryption, okay? So that is RSA algorithm. That is how you generate keys and that is how you do encryption and decryption, okay? So uh, for key generation, first you need to choose a values for uh, P and Q, then you need to calculate N, which is equal to P into Q. Then for uh, you, can, you need to calculate phi of N, which is P minus 1 into Q minus 1. Then you need to choose a value, which is between 1 and phi of N, and uh, which is uh, relatively co-prime to phi of N. Okay? Then with E, you need to calculate D. You need to find multiplicative inverse. Then you can generate keys, public key and private key. Okay? Then using that, you can encrypt or decrypt the data. Okay, and one thing uh, you must take care of is you need to select a message which is less than n. If you select uh, 40 here, then it will not work. So anyway, we uh, we need to choose values for p and q which are very large. So uh, n or will also be very large. Okay, so that is uh, RSA algorithm, and I hope you all understood this. Thank you.